Okay, in this lesson, we are going to talk all about Lambda. Lambda is a function that promises to enable you as a user to create your own custom functions. This can be really, really powerful depending on the type of work that you do every day. The first thing that I thought when I heard about Lambda, which by the way, turned a lot of heads in the Excel MVP community, as well as just Excel users in general, how cool is it to be able to create your own custom functions? Well, so the first thing I started thinking, well, what could I do with Lambda? What in the financial modeling context could be really useful as a custom function? So what I've done here in, in this lesson, we're gonna go through what I think are six or seven really cool functions that can now be created and invoked in Excel using the Lambda, Lambda function that's gonna save you some time. So if you go off to the side of Excel and type in Lambda, and this appears great, you've got it built in. If you don't see that, then you wanna go into account and make sure that you are signed up as an Office Insider. You wanna change your channel to Office Insider, you're signed up for the beta channel, and that will give you Lambda, right? Eventually, Excel will roll this out to everyone. If you're watching this video, you don't quite have it yet, that's what you need to do. Alrighty, so now let's get into the lesson. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just walk you through the most simple example of how to use Lambda. We're gonna create a function called G rate for growth rate, and that's gonna grow data by a growth rate. So I'm gonna go into this calculation tab here, and I'm gonna show you how this works. So you know, we're, when we teach financial modeling, obviously we're gonna use a financial modeling example here. The most typical thing you see is you've got revenue of 100 and then you think, okay, well, you know, next year it's gonna grow by 15%, the year after that's gonna grow by 20%, the year after that's gonna grow by 25%, whatever the numbers are, doesn't really matter for us. And then normally what we would do is we would take the prior year's value and grow it by that growth rate, extend that off, and we have our data. Well, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we're doing this all the time, rather than having to type in one plus uh, the growth rate all the time, we could just create a Lambda for it. We could just create a function that basically creates a growth rate function, right? Admittedly, this isn't the most exciting thing in the world. I promise you it's gonna get a little bit more exciting, but this is gonna get our hands wet, uh, our feet wet, I should say, with just creating the Lambda. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type Lambda, and we are going to identify a parameter. So first of all, Lambda, because this is a universal function, you need to identify a parameter, not a specific cell reference, that's gonna serve as your baseline calculation. So for example, in here, what I would normally, I would basically wanna do is I, I'd wanna have my, whatever the user reference is for revenue in this case, and then I would basically take that and grow that revenue by one plus, one plus the specific growth rate that the user is defined in this cell, right? So there's really, two arguments that Lambda is always gonna need in this case. Again, I don't want specific cell references because I wanna make this universal. So the way Lambda works, it says, okay, well that's C9, that's gonna be that user input for your base calculation. So we can just call it base, we can call it whatever we want. And that really becomes the first parameter. And then the second parameter is gonna be the growth rate. So we can just call it growth rate, okay? And so now that you've identified the two, and you actually have to sort of front load that, you have to identify all the parameters in the function up front, that way Excel knows, okay, there, there are actually two parameters here that I need, and then you get into your calculation. So let me clear this out and define the calculation as simply base times one plus that growth rate. So really you're abstracting, it's pretty simple, you're basically abstracting the calculation that you wanna create a custom function for. So you have the two parameters, the base, the, the growth rate itself, those are the two parameters. And then the formula itself is just this base times one plus the growth rate. And in fact, this little sort of tool tip here tells you here, for every comma separation, you can either put in the, a parameter or the actual calculation, right? So that's where we're at. But you know, if I just hit enter right now, Excel doesn't know what I'm referring to, right? There's no calculation. So the way you can test it before you actually convert this to a function is you actually have a separate parentheses right afterwards, and then you put in the two parameters that are identified at the, at the front here, you actually have to sort of associate a specific cell reference with both, right? And then you'll actually get your output. So this should output 115 because it'll take that C9, it knows, okay, that's the first parameter, so that goes into this calculation, plus C10, that's the growth rate parameter, it goes in here and it's done. Right, so now I know that my lambda is working. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna take that extra parentheses, I'm just gonna take the actual lambda, right? How do I actually turn this into something called G rate that I can, you know, if I could type in G rate, 
going forward, give me, you know, a base. And right now there's, there's nothing. I haven't created the function, right? I, I don't have this. This is what I'd like to create. I don't have that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Lambda. I'm going to take it right here. I'm going to copy it with the equal sign. I'm going to hit Alt M N to invoke the name manager. This is where you assign Lambda. Again, this is all stuff you would have had to do within VBA. Now you can do it outside of VBA and you can call this great. That's the name you can re and it refers to this lambda right so i'm going to i'm going to expand this out and you can see how it works you got to have that equal sign in there otherwise it won't work i'm going to click okay here and you can see it so now it's created the function i can click close now going forward you know if i've got this you know this exercise i no longer have to make any calculations i just do um, g rate you'll see it it pops up and I identify the base and the growth rate. Now notice there's no actual tooltip here that tells you what the functions are. So you have to remember them. And if you forget, right, I'm going to copy this across. This is all done. So let's not bury the lead. We've created our first own custom function, which is really, really cool. But the one thing that I did want to mention is that when you are creating this, it's actually becomes all the more important to at least somewhere explain what's happening. So you have to say, Hey, look, the base, is you know first argument is um, the base this is um, the base for the calculation and then the next parameter is growth rate the growth rate so this is really self-explanatory but it's going to get more complicated and that way you can see okay so the base represents the base for the calculation, the growth rate represents the growth rate. And here you can go in here and actually see the Lambda. So so that's the only recommendation. It's gonna be a little tricky to see what's going on otherwise. And, and part of what I'll talk about my general view on this is that this obviously reduces the transparency of what's going on in formulas. And so for many people, this is a game changer when they're constantly doing stuff on their own, creating function, long formulas and functions. But for others for whom transparency is really important, well, you gotta sort of weigh the pros and cons of this, right? Let's go, go into some more exciting examples.